This part is printed in rigid PETG, yet it bends and flexes like rubber. There's a simple design trick that makes it work like this, and today I'm going to teach it to you. This video is part of a series on creating custom 3D designs for 3D printing using a free Onshape account. If you'd like to start from the beginning, there's a link in the description to the entire playlist. Today we explore a design technique that's used to make rigid flat materials on a laser cutter quite bendy, and we're going to apply it to 3D printing. But even if you don't design your own CAD, at the end I've got a version for you which you can apply simply in your slicer to make other objects bendy. When I left teaching to do YouTube full time, my school gifted me these beautiful laser cut timber pieces. They are Australian made and manufactured and the craftsmanship is fantastic. Now timber, if it's thin enough, can bend quite easily, but this material is 4mm thick, yet it's quite flexible. And you can see the reason why, with this laser cut pattern, cut the whole way through the material. This means that we can have this fairly complicated curving shape, starting with three flat pieces of wood. But the final shapes we create don't just have to be rigid, we can create live hinges as well, creating cases to hold treasured possessions. The magnetic latch on top makes this very satisfying to play with. For a few years now, I've wanted to see if I can recreate this with 3D printing, using filament that's also rigid as soon as it gets too thick. As a proof of concept, I made this very simple example, and I'll now show you how to recreate the pattern. The first thing I recommend is creating your base shape separately. You can then extrude it, providing a flat surface to do the pattern sketch on. The only other thing to mention is that I did all of my testing with a thickness of 2mm and this seemed to work quite well, so that's what I'd recommend as a starting point. We've started a new sketch on the top surface, and the actual pattern is not that complicated, and you might be surprised how quick it is to generate it. I'm only going to be drawing with two tools, the center point rectangle and the regular straight line. I'd recommend drawing the first rectangles of your slot pattern in the lower left of wherever you want the whole thing to be positioned, as this will simplify the process at later steps. We're going to start with a center point rectangle, drawing it long and skinny. Here I'm drawing it as a vertical slot, but everything works the same horizontally too. Now these dimensions I took with calipers from the wooden example I had, and they turned out to be spot on. The length of the slot can be 30, and the width 0.5mm. At this stage, we're purposely leaving this unconstrained so we can drag it around into position. We're now going to select the same tool, snap to the center, come up and draw a second one of these rectangles. We're immediately going to dimension the gap between them, and I would recommend 5mm as a starting point. We can then use the equals constraint to click on a side of the new rectangle as well as one of the old ones, and now the two will match. And if they didn't already snap to a line, you can do the same for the narrow end of the rectangles too. We're going to come up to our straight line tool and then click on the construction tool which can also be toggled with Q on the keyboard. We'll now draw a straight construction line between the midpoints of the two rectangle edges. And then from the midpoint of that, we'll draw another straight construction line, setting it to be 2mm wide. Once again, back to our rectangle tool and we're going to draw a third rectangle that matches the first two. Again, I'll use the equals constraint so I don't have to dimension this, and I'll do so for the long edge as well as the short edge. Now for the final time, I'll once again snap to the midpoint of our third rectangle and use that as a center point for the fourth. Again, I'll dimension a five millimeter gap in between the two, and then use equal constraints to get everything matching. Now it doesn't look like much, but this is the basis that we need to create the pattern. And to do that, we're gonna come up and click on the linear pattern tool. We can simply drag a box around everything we've drawn so far. And now comes the fun part where we tweak the parameters. Firstly, the gap in between should be twice what we had between our first two. So if you recall, that was two millimeters. So we're going to set the offset to four millimeters. By default, the pattern will be duplicated three times horizontally, but we can change this number to suit our needs. Also by default, the pattern will only go horizontally and not vertically. We can see that the amount of duplicates is set to one, so to fix this, we double click on this number and enter a larger value. If we guess incorrectly the first time, we can edit this number later. The vertical pattern spacing is off, so we'll need to change it. Our slots are 30 wide with a five millimeter gap in between. So we add these together to arrive at 35 millimeters. At this stage, you should take care 
to move the camera around and ensure that the pattern isn't overlapping itself. If that's the case, you know you've got your two offset numbers correct. You can also edit the multipliers to extend the pattern if it's too short, and of course change the width if it's too narrow. Sometimes I assume to save memory, it won't preview all of the components, instead showing you the start and the end of the pattern. But don't worry, this has no effect on the final result. Once we're happy, the icon is telling us to click the left mouse button to make the pattern final. And we're almost ready to go. Now the good thing is, even after the pattern is finished, we can still come back and edit the multipliers, growing or shrinking the extent of the pattern. Personally, I like my patterns to be symmetrical. To achieve this, from this point, we can simply drag a box, making sure to only overlap the outer column, and then simply press delete on the keyboard. With this much happening in the sketch, unfortunately Onshape does get a little sluggish, but it will get there after a few seconds. After creating a detailed pattern like this in a sketch, we can easily come back and select any aspects that we don't like, highlighting them and then deleting them. Doing this will let your slot pattern be as visually appealing as possible. Everything is now symmetrical from left to right as well as top to bottom, so our final step is to center this pattern on the middle of this object, and this is part of the reason why we did it on a separate sketch. We're going to come down and draw a construction line from the corner of the pattern to the corner of our base shape. We'll then repeat that for a second corner, and then once more for our third and final corner. To finish up, all we need to do is to click on each of these three lines and then come up and click the equals constraint. After several seconds of thinking time, the whole slot pattern should now snap centered and symmetrical on top of the base shape. We can close it, come to extrude, we'll toggle to remove, and then rather than clicking each of these shapes one at a time, we can simply click sketch three over on the left hand side. Make sure the cut goes the whole way through the base shape and then click the tick to finish the extrude. And that's it, that's the entire pattern created, and hopefully you can see how this can apply to many different designs using those same basic steps. To help, I've got some lists and diagrams linked in the description. Let's quickly recap. We want to start by drawing and extruding the base shape. Here, this was a 2mm thick rectangular prism. Then we'll start a sketch on top and create 4 rectangles. Obviously the dimensions will vary depending on your design. And I've created this diagram to tell you those that you should try and stick to versus those that you should play with. Step 3 is to use a linear pattern tool to extend the slots across the shape, and you can grow and shrink the pattern horizontally or vertically to suit your base shape. And this previous diagram has some guidelines for how to calculate the offset. Next up, we trim any parts of the pattern we don't want. This is simply a matter of dragging a box around unwanted components and pressing delete on the keyboard. We then center or position the entire pattern above the base shape. You can use construction lines and constraints or simply eyeball it. And finally, we extrude cut the pattern through the base shape to create the slots. Remember to input by clicking on our pattern sketch, rather than each sketch line individually. When it comes to slicing this, there's really not much you need to worry about. I didn't change perimeters, infill, anything like that. The most important thing I did was make sure I was printing in PTG, as it has a little more flex than PLA. I did test later on with PLA, and it will flex, just not as flexible as PTG and if you try to bend it too far, it is more likely to fail. As for the PETG version, it was glorious straight off the print bed, working even better than I had hoped for. In terms of being tactile, this is a very satisfying print to play with. It's hard to describe, so I recommend that you print one and try it. As well as bending in the method that we intended, it also acts as a compression or tension spring, and I do enjoy watching the pattern contort as you apply loads to it with the rectangles becoming triangles when compressed or diamonds when elongated. There's a fair amount of degree of freedom in terms of flexing it in directions that we didn't originally intend. All in all, a great first result. Proof of concept achieved, so now what can I actually make with it? My next idea was to create a bowl that started life as a flat shape. Each segment is made up of pentagons, and if this was twice as big as it is, it would be a dodecahedron. Once again, I started by sketching the base shape separately, and extruding it to be 2mm thick. I then constructed a simple slot pattern as before, and set up some extra lines that I would use to trim. After cutting out the slots with extrude, I used a circular pattern to transfer the slots around the design. To do this, you need to change the mode from part pattern to feature pattern, and then input any extruded cuts by clicking on them on the left hand side feature list. If you're getting errors, try clicking apply per instance. This one also turned out much better than I had expected. 
each of the segments flex where I wanted them to, and it was clear that each of them met in the corner, pretty much on the perfect angle. So I went back and designed this little retaining clip, designed to clip into the two corner holes when everything was folded. The clearances for this are probably a tad too loose, but ultimately it works. And after inserting the fifth and final clip, I had myself a bowl that was printed completely flat. In high-end woodworking, there's this great technique where you can get truly organic curves by using steam to bend and then laminate together thin sheets of timber. What I like about these forms is that they're compound curves. They curve in more than one direction. So to see if I could recreate this, I made a long and skinny strip with the end two thirds having the slot pattern. And as another proof of concept, this one was successful. Not only could we twist, but we could mimic the timber designs by doing one fold and then twisting the ends to create proper compound curves. Now that I knew this was possible, I wanted to apply the technique to an actual design of my own. So I modeled this interesting shape that I figured would make a very unique phone stand. The blue section would be a long strip, just like in my test piece, and the base would be mostly printed flat, but with the pattern in this single curve, so it could be bent up to then slot into the blue piece. I had cut out so everything could slot together, and also a raised boss at the front to stop the phone from sliding forward. To work out how long the blue strip would be when straight, I went into the sketches that made up the curved version and used the measurement tool to measure them individually. I then laid down a flat strip with all of these lengths stacked together and repeated my usual steps to create the slot pattern on the left before mirroring it over to the right. For the base, I duplicated the geometry, leaving out the bit that was curled up and then added this on but in a flat configuration. I then sketched on the bending pattern and extruded it through to complete the two parts. The clearance I designed where the two parts fit together was spot on. But even so, as I tried to move the compound curve into position, the two parts kept on popping apart. My brute force solution was to use super glue before inserting them into the base once more. This kept everything together, but I think I had the bend starting from the wrong part of the black base. The resultant shape was able to hold my phone, but on a much steeper angle than I originally intended. So definitely not the elegant curve that I was originally planning. In part because the whole base was also 2mm thick and it was flexing a little bit as well. So this version of the concept definitely needs a little more development, but I'm sure you'll agree the potential is there. At the start I promised a slicer only version, so here's how it works. In the last tab of the source CAD is this part studio where I've made the pattern by itself and exported a couple of different versions as an SDL where all of the parts are combined. This means that if you have an existing thin shape, you can right click on it, come up to add negative part and then load. This will import whatever version that you picked. Now all you have to do is overlap it with your object and then click slice. And as you can see, your object will slice with the pattern in place. There's different versions to suit different applications and hopefully that means there's a version to suit whatever your project is. And you can always make a copy of my source CAD, come into sketch one, edit the amount of copies as well as the widths and then export your own. Another option is to import these pre-made STLs into Tinkercad. You can then set them to be a whole, overlap them with your other part, select everything and then click group. This will also cut in the bendy pattern. You can add on whatever other shapes you like before you export. I quite enjoyed experimenting with this idea and I'm keen to see what others do with it, especially considering its potential to replace springs and rubber bands in moving objects. Everything you need is linked below, so please head down and try it out. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy 3D printing, rigid, bendable objects. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.